from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube, and you're watching our continuous coverage of the IBM Think 2020 digital event experience. And Ed Walsh is here. He's the general manager of the IBM Storage Division and Software Defined Infrastructure. Ed, last time you were about four feet to my left. <laughs> I wish we were face to face, but this will this will have to do. Thanks for coming on. The new normal. I like to call this maybe the new abnormal, as some of us are still in lockdown. But it is the new normal, so we'll see more of this. So welcome it. I embrace it. So Ed, you, you've obviously seen a number of, of downturns. You've run a lot, a lot of businesses, you've been on rocket ship businesses, you've been at IBM for a couple of stints. Obviously we've never seen anything like this. When did you first start getting visibility uh, that this was going to be an issue? Obviously you guys have a presence in China and, and, and AP, uh, but when did you start to see it and what was your first move to the, for the team? Yeah, sure. And so, uh, yeah, I've had the opportunity to lead a couple businesses in 2000, 2001, 2008. Uh, and this is, it, it is very different. But as far as our visibility on this, um, we have a worldwide and I'll say world-class supply chain. So we saw this start as a supply chain issue. Um, and we came into it hot from Q4. We had a very good Q4. So we came into it hot for supply. So we were tracking it early. And then we started to see the issues in China in late January. Then of course they shut down, they came back open after the Chinese New Year and to be honest, they weren't quite back. So we were watching it almost as a supply chain challenge. Yes, we do a lot of business in China, so we were also watching that, but it was a supply chain, but every single day managing that supply chain. I, again, I would give a compliment to my team. Uh, I don't think anyone has a better supply chain. But then of course it quickly moved and everyone says, well, you should have seen it. it this happened really fast. So it's, uh, and it's different than the other crises because it actually has to do with humans and lives and all the other crises were financial crises. And we largely just managed the business through it. Um, and you worry about your employees from the stress level, but you don't worry about the employees about the health level. So, uh, so we did see it early with supply chain that quickly got in demand. And to be honest, when Italy went down, well, when Italy had the challenges, it happened so fast with a shutdown. Uh, that was kind of a, a big wake up call for us. Um, you saw IBM respond very quickly. Um, everyone was at home almost immediately, even in countries we weren't set up for, really took care of our people, but then we immediately, you saw the IBMers go to work really helping our clients. So we saw it kind of early, but it went from 100% supply chain to a demand issue. And then we did have different, real uh, interesting is a bad word, but interesting supply chain challenges as a quarter went on. Different countries stopping shipping coming in, had to get a government approvals to get things. Um, so it was a good partnership with some of our um, clients to get things where they need to be in the right time. Uh, but it was probably, uh, I'll remember this quarter for a lot of different reasons. Um, and it worked out <laughs> good for us, but uh, to be honest, it was, it, and it's different from the other crises because it wasn't just a financial issue, which I think we're just getting into actually. Um, right. It was human and you saw different, two of our best regions were Italy and Spain. Now you think, whoa, why, you know, you think, think about all the going on in the quarter in, in Italy, but it was a relationship. It was, you know, we got our, the IBM members got safe real quick, but then we quickly got them to engage with the clients, but we didn't push them, it was natural. Next thing you know, that trust, I think there was a flight back to quality and you saw these different companies. Now it was the things they had to get done, um, but it was, it was pretty amazing quarter. I, to me, it was more seeing the team. You see your teams react to crises and challenges in different ways. And sometimes they paralyze, and we didn't see that at all in the team, which is which was pretty telling. Um, but we saw it yeah. come from the beginning, I mean, probably before this, we saw supply chain as we came into Q1 hot on supply. So we kind of saw it early, and we're already doing drills. So we saw it kind of right when it was hitting. So. But it was interesting. You used the term interesting, and it, it, it challenging because it was sort of not only day to day for you. It was probably like minute by minute, hour by hour, country by country, region by region. How did you change the way in which you communicated to your uh, teams, or did you? Well, so quickly, um, so one, I think culture. So I've been in a couple of different companies, big and small. Um, so I've seen different cultures react. And the IBM culture is one that I, I kind of look back in awe in this last quarter, just because it's very customer intimate. That you don't have to, if the customer's in trouble, you can't stop them from running to help the clients. So we saw a natural, you know, we at IBM made sure the employees were fine, got everyone at home, but we saw them quickly go after it. So most of it is communication. Um, you do see these crises. Um, 
you see some groups kind of freeze and and you have to kind of walk them through it and make sure one they're okay this this one was different you had to make sure your team was okay um both mentally physically and their families and it was a different stress level it was very personal and affected all of them where the financial crises it affect it didn't affect everyone as much it, it was more sterile uh this one was wow really different from a leadership um but it's all the same you have to get the team together make sure they're healthy happy uh, help, uh and mentally healthy too and then you have to get people to kind of how do you go drive and help clients out in this case it was help keep, make sure your clients are okay they're healthy and then what can we do to help them and i think that became more natural and then of course is bifurcate let's drive the business supply chain which is i would say with any of the different um challenges but it's all communication but on this one it was really had a check with the team often we also had this new normal i call this a new abnormal which you know also you can't meet with people so you couldn't get people physically together. So I call abnormal because we're still, we'll get to the new normal and we'll use a lot more remote type of communication. But it was, I've never been so busy. I'm on video calls with all my teams every day. Uh, you see people uh, using different uh, tools to communicate like Slack, but also a lot more video. Uh, so it's communication, communication, which is the same thing. It's all the same thing with teams, get them together, give them good direction. But in this one, it was make sure they're safe first and then move on. Same thing with clients, make sure they're safe. Yeah. Uh, and that was what was fundamentally different about this. Um, anyway, so. Yeah. You know, Ed, we, we're both grinders. I always joke, I work a half day every day. It doesn't matter which 12 hours. And I'm, I'm the same way. I have a, I'd take 12 hour days and a heartbeat these days. I mean, it's just really been, been crazy. And I have to agree that the teams around the world and our, and our client space, of course, the Cube teams have really, really stepped up. But I want to ask you about the quarter. You're right, you came in hot in, in December, meaning you had a really good, good Q4. I, you know, I reached out to Tom Rosamilia last September and said, hey, nice announcement, Z15. He said, did you cover it? I said, I did. And I sent them my breaking analysis in which I, I, I really yeah. kind of dug into the, the life cycles of the Z and how it affects, you know, IBM's overall business. And I predicted this is going to go on for several quarters where IBM has a, a real tail, tailwind, not only in, in systems hardware, but also, you know, the storage piece of the systems hardware business. We saw that last quarter, it grew 19% in storage, 60 plus percent. In, in, in Z hardware, uh, pretty amazing. What, what's going on? Yeah. Unpack the, the quarter for us a little bit. Yeah, so if it wasn't for the crises, <laughs> I think all that would be played. We yeah. had some announcements on across the entire storage portfolio. So what we do for storage for Z, both disk and tape, big announcements in Q3, uh, directly aligned with what we do with the new store, you know, the new Z. Uh, you get a lot of value, one on one is three, so a lot of synergy between those different platforms. So hit the demand and what clients are trying to do. Uh, bringing new, you know, uh, cloud development platforms, you know, native cloud development, but also using cloud. So there's a whole bunch of different things we brought to that platform. But we also launched new AI platforms, so storage for AI and big data. Uh, and then in Q1, we launched our new distributed storage. So we're kind of coming in from an offering set. In fact, this quarter, uh, you know, 19% growth. Um, I think it's like speaks volumes. Not on the offering, yes, but more how we reacted with our clients more than anything else. Uh, I think it was, a, as we talked about earlier, it was an interesting quarter. And I think it, clients are responding to the flight of quality, but also who's engaging with them the right way. So we do have a completely refreshed offering set across. In fact, this quarter, every single one of our offerings, every single one of our offerings grew, which is more of a speaker, if you have the right offerings, meeting the market, helping them with, we use the term chapter two, right? Your own journey to the cloud, moving, modernizing your environment. We need to free up our teams. We did a dramatic simplification on both what we do with storage Z, but also distributed storage and what we do for storage AI and a big focus on cyber resiliency. Those are hitting what I'll say the market was in Q4, but they happen to also be hitting the market for what's going on now and into the new normal. So a lot of the simplification was how do you remote manage? How do you do things? In fact, one of the biggest things we do to our clients is, hey, we have all these tools. We give you a lot of things for free baseline, but we also have these increased like pro versions. We're just said, Take them, use them because it allows you to monitor and manage your environment better remotely. It's all web based, uh, and that was one of the biggest things to do. But that is hitting the market. That's that's the new normal, and we did that across both Z, distributed storage, um, but also what we did in uh, cyber resiliency and AI. I want to hit on a couple of those points. I mean, the, the, I want to start with the cyber resiliency because we were one of the first yeah. to report with our with our uh, partner ETR, our data partner, that the the work from home offset was was somewhat cushioning the downturn. I mean, it's ugly, but, but still work from home pivot. And that included 
uh, 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 solutions around ransomware, data protection, yep. cyber resiliency, so yep. investment, actually 20% of the CIOs that we surveyed actually plan on spending more in 2020 because of, it wasn't just you know, Zoom and WebEx, it was, it was other infrastructure around it, BDI, et cetera. So you're seeing that, uh, it sounds like. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about sort of cyber resiliency, yep. and I'm especially interested in the context of going forward. It's, it feels like this is going to be one of those permanent things where you know, clients might sacrifice some near-term profitability to have more flexibility and resiliency in their business and not rely so much on just narrow DR, but more business continuance. No, I think you could, in fact, um, we've always been, you know, leader in business continuance and we still are, but cyber resiliency is just fundamentally different. In fact, recovering from a ransomware or a, um, you know, malware incident is different, fundamentally different tool sets than what you're doing. You need to have copies of your data, of course, but very different than what if you were DR or single server come up and running. So you see us and mostly, I think we're ahead of it because as IBM, we're the largest outsourcer in the world. So we actually live with these incidents as IBM. So uh, in normal storage, you hear about them and typically it's a storage issue. They had an issue that came back and running. We are living with what we do in our storage outsourcing or strategic outsourcing group. And so we're putting into all of our products a lot of unique things around cyber resiliency. So what we did for Storage for Z, it, it, it literally is a safeguard copy. It's an offering that literally gives you 500 recover points that have been separated administratively and physically. So you're able to literally internal and external threats protect yourself. Best in class, no one else has a solution set. We did the same thing in distributed. So, but in distributed, what we're trying to do is help people not only, I use the term left the boom and right a boom. Left the boom is before your incident, how do you prepare? How do you have the right backup recovery? How do you have the right tool sets, recover points? How do you protect yourself? How do you make sure you're um, you know, monitoring for ransomware every single night with your backup recovery tools? But the right of boom is once you do get hit, you go into this instant response situation where eyes are on you, lights are on you. How do you give the humans uh, the right tools so they can react the right way and be quick? So all of a sudden storage plays a huge role with ransomware and malware. All of a sudden you get in the call, you know, you, the boom hits, you get the call, it's from the CEO, you got to fix it. You need new tools. Like what recover point do you go back to? Um, it's iterative in nature. Uh, well, you, you get hit on, I get a call on Friday, but I don't know when the, the malware got in there. Was it Wednesday or Tuesday? And, it might be different per system. It's an iterative process. You need the right tools to use all your copies, primary storage, secondary storage, tertiary copies, DR copies, and find out what's your best recover point. And it's iterative. You have to literally bring up environments. You have to have fence network capabilities and all your tools to allow you to literally bring them up quickly in succession or all together, find the best recover point and get to as soon as you can. So those are things I think we're leading. And we launched all this before this issue. But we also saw an increase in malware in our client set. So to be honest, you know, even with all this crisis, we're seeing an increase. And in malware ransomware is where the storage infrastructure layer really matters in that instant response capability, where if you have an instant, someone stole your data sets, and typically storage guys not going to get a call. Now, IBM has great solution sets around there, AI-driven capabilities to allow you to protect yourself there. But this is on ransomware. Is something that storage plays a huge role. We do it on distributed, we do it on mainframe with specialized solution sets. No one else in the industry is doing that. And of course, backup re uh, and recovery and quick recovery in an orchestrated fashion. That's what we do around Spectrum Protect all day long, right? So, Ed, last time we met, uh, you you know shared with us your your consolidation strategy, your big you know announcement uh, last fall. Uh, and obviously, you know, great quarter, 19% growth. A, a lot of that was sort of, you know, drafting off the Z and the, you know, the DS8900. But, but I'm wondering how that, how that consolidation play worked. We talked about the challenges of doing that, you know, yep. the importance of that, how others are going to have to respond. And we, we're seeing that in the industry for a lot of the large portfolio players. But, but how did that, you know, how's that going? Can you give us, what can you yep. tell us about the, the progress there in terms of its uptake and adoption? Sure. Sure, so really what we did is we kind of looked at the industry and said, everyone's adding too much complexity. You know, the whole industry is based on having a high-end, mid-range and low-end storage environment. Um, and the high-end did everything, custom silicon, great performance, uh, but you had to pay a price for it. And then the whole industry is based upon just getting to the next gen. So if you're high-end, and by the way, the problem is every client has high-end, mid-range and low-end storage. So you have dual vendor strategy, but what you do is you have to, the whole industry is just getting to the next gen high-end, uh, you see EMC Dell, you know, hashtag next generation mid-range storage. The whole industry, including in the past IBM, was structured and getting you there. So we basically announced no more of that. It doesn't make sense. It used to, it no longer makes sense. 
We drive a lot of innovation, what we're doing with Silicon, but software, we came to one platform, one platform that allow you to have different price points up down the stack from low end, mid range and high end, but without compromise. It was a dramatic simplification, right? Uh, that was well respected, you know, I would say we had an unbelievable response from that. And you saw a dramatic growth. So you kind of hit upon, we grew across all of our segments. Yes, we had a good growth on what we do for storage for Z, but we had an equally good growth as we did around distributed storage. So if you have physical environments, virtual environments, VMware, Hyper-V, containers, public cloud, hybrid cloud, our distributed storage portfolio saw one of the biggest uh, increases. Um, and we, again, we grew in every one of these segments. So one, the simplification, you know, is chapter two, how do you free up your team? How do you modernize your application so you can innovate? Uh, it's critical you free up your team. So that one thing, now we also did a lot of, you know, ability to do remote management, made it very simple to use um, and simple to support, which also helps in the new normal, but it hit the right tone with it, our partners, but also our clients. And you saw a pretty massive uptick after the February announcement. So it's only half a quarter. And we saw quite a large lift. I want to ask you about the storage for big data and AI as well. There seems to be yeah. a new emerging workload you got all this data out there that we've collected and you know, Hadoop and analytics over the last 10 years. Now you're applying, uh, we've talked about this, the new innovation cocktail. You got data, AI, and, and the cloud yeah. gives you the scale, whether it's on-prem or in the public cloud. Uh, but there seems to be a new workload where you get a, you know, kind of a data store. You've got the analytic workloads that, that are in there. You've got some data science tooling uh, and other you know, AI that you're applying. That seems to be an emerging workload, you know, kind of beyond uh, just kind of infrastructure as a service, but, but a really new way to get insights out of data. Data is plentiful, insights are not. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Bob Pizziano used to say. <laughs> so it, uh, talk about that workload and, and, yeah. and how that is, is powering your business and what are you seeing there? Well, I think this is where I see IBM uh, really um, helping clients with this journey to building smarter businesses because AI is going to be in every workload. You're bringing up very specific workloads around machine learning, deep learning, bring cusp on silicon like GPUs into it on these big data lake. Uh, how do you take a data swamp and make a data lake? Um, but uh, what I'll say is IBM's doing this and we use the term ladder to AI and there's no AI without IA, information architecture. You have to have the right infrastructure to do it. We also see different groups having random acts of AI. A data scientist in division A does something that's kind of interesting. Another group does something interesting and maybe a third. It's like the early days of data warehousing but they're not able to take it together and bring it so they can infuse AI across all the processes in a company and have one single view of the truth. So we see uh, people going through this natural progression. Some start independently and fight the technology, some bring it together. So everything we're doing from, I'll talk about what we're doing in storage, infrastructure, servers, but also across what we're doing, you know, our um, uh, cloud pack for data offering and make it very simple for you to deploy and get the use case out of it. But for storage, it's about when you want to bring it together, you need the right performance. So we, bar none, have the best storage for AI and data. It's based upon our, you know, literally um, award-winning, you know, scale-up uh, file system called GPFS or Spectrum Scale. It runs the largest AI supercomputers in the world. The same as X software you can buy in a 2 u device that we launched in, in December, which is called our ESS um, 3000. It's a single all-flash array. It's a cluster, but you can, no compromise, you can go from that 2U device to the largest AI supercomputer in the world configuration, exact same technology, hardware and software that we deployed. So now you can start small and grow. And then we're helping you along, how do you get the value out of it? So that's typically where storage ends. I gave you the best platform you can possibly have, cost effect is small, and you can scale to the biggest thing you want to do. The next thing we're doing, which people say, well, that's not storage, Ed, why are you doing that? We're doing things called Spectrum Discover. It's managing your metadata to making your data scientists the most productive possible. They spend 80% 80, 80 of the time literally just understanding the data, tagging the data, organizing it so they know what they're doing with it. Because if you don't have the right AI data sets, you really can't get the outcome. So we have what's called Spectrum Discover, works across a whole bunch of other products, but also all of our portfolio, both object storage, file system block, allows you to look at the environment, organize it, and save dramatic amount of time for data scientists. And of course, that's easy feed into all the things we do around Cloud Pack for Data which is where IBM is really putting a lot of these open source and our own tools together so you can move forward pretty quickly. The key thing is how does IBM help you not fight technology? We know what you want to accomplish. Let's help you, but not limit you by, we're letting you use all the different open source tools that you guys to just want, but allow you to move forward and help you in that journey. And it is a journey and, and we're meeting clients where they are because everyone's on a different 
you know, I guess, segment of the journey and how do we help you go through it? And from a storage, uh, you're seeing that environment really double every quarter. Um, for the people that are looking for it, no one really touches us. Um, in fact, our number two and three customers, um, Competitors in the space use the same software that we OEM to them. So we're in a very good position when it comes to storage for AI and big data. So they say it's better to be lucky than good. I say it's it's better <laughs> to be good and lucky. And so you know we're not going back to the to the twenty tens. It's not happening. We we've, we've got this new abnormal, as you call it. I, I like that phrase. Yeah. Uh, and, and you've done a lot of the hard work in terms of rationalizing the portfolio. You've done the R and D, and you started this years ago, and it took a long time. Yeah. Um, but, but I wonder if you could just talk about why you feel like you're in a good position coming out of this thing and who knows how we're going to come out of it, but, but what are the critical components that you feel you have in your arsenal that make, will make you stronger and more competitive uh, you know, relative to you know, the, uh, the landscape out there? Your thoughts? Yeah, so now this is going to sound, uh, well, okay. So all these different issues we've been through, all these crises we've been through in our careers, um, there's an old adage, if you can last through them and you get resource, you can come out stronger. And it's very true. So you can grow, you can do the right things, but you have to have the right offerings. Sometimes that's a little lucky, you entered right. I think we entered perfectly with the right innovation that did take us years to get, but we're hitting the current market, but also what I'll say is the new normal market. Um, and I think that's an opportunity. And I've always said, listen, the world doesn't need another storage ray. What they're looking for are solutions around the storage challenges. And I think what we've done around the product portfolio with, we use the term offerings, was the offerings we put around it with a different software allows you to actually truly free, you know, if it's really chapter two, now we're trying to modernize your core infrastructure. You need to free up your team so they can innovate. We're going to do that dramatically in what we do in storage going to help you with that journey to cloud, either on-prem or into the public cloud, or really what we see is a hybrid multi-cloud fabric happening, but also we do cyber resiliency as we built in from the core. So I think we're hitting it right. Um, now the new normal is all the things, that it has to be simple, it has to be rope managed, and those are all the things we made massive investments across every one of our portfolio items that just got launched, launched in the last two quarters. So I think we're in good stead, but to be honest, in these times, as we talked earlier, you work harder, you got to really embrace the client feedback. Um, I think IBM is a good position to do that. Also with the greater IBM, we see a bigger um, opportunity set to find out how to help clients. So we're the number one AI company in the world. So we're seeing what clients really want to do with AI and how the infrastructure is holding back. Number one outsourcer, we're seeing how people are really dealing with cyber resiliency and especially malware, ransomware, where storage really impacts you. We're seeing exactly how to do it and what tools to push forward. And that's where you're seeing very unique opportunities. And in these times, if you can have the right product, the right go-to-market, you can do very well. And more importantly, you do it by helping clients. If you can help clients through this, you come out stronger. I think some other people in storage, it becomes more challenging. I don't think people just want you know, the next flash array. I think they're looking for solution sets and uh, companies to help them get through and get to really the new, I think we're going to get to the new normal. I think this is the new abnormal. <laughs> I can't call it normal when we're all locked away. Um, the new normal is going to be much faster. You're going to have to go faster. So I think IBM and uh, IBM Storage is aligned with, let's help you with the cloud journey. Let's help you build smarter businesses. We'll make sure cyber resiliency is built in there. But we're going to, and you're seeing it across every division of IBM step up and help you in that, um, in that direction. That's what I think is differentiated. And that's why I'm excited about what we're doing at IBM in general, but also you know, IBM Storage is perfectly aligned with that overall mission. And it's, it's kind of exciting to see it kind of play out in front of clients. Well, I think you're right. I think the last decade was, you know, a lot of it was about the all flash data center and, and, and the future is about powering innovation infrastructure for machine intelligence yeah. uh, and, and really getting insights out of data, scaling. Uh, Ed, yeah. Ed Walsh, always great to have you on theCUBE. Uh, hopefully we can do this, you know, a little closer face to face, maybe <laughs> six feet apart. Um, and then eventually we could shake hands or high five or whatever works. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you looking good and uh, stay safe. Hey, thank you, stay safe. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and our continuous coverage of the IBM Think 2020 digital event experience. We'll be right back after this short break.